sort of duplicating that information. So I don't think we need any explicit handling of that on the Rust side, but no one's really taken a close look at it yet. Um, and then we, we, we have arithmetic overflow handling sort of natively in Rust. We don't yet have uh, parity in behavior. Like when there is an overflow in Rust, uh, it is not the same, we don't have the same behavior as when we have overflow uh, when we're dealing with the, the sanitizers on the C side. So we may end up with different results. Uh, it'd be nice to have one result. Um, but anyway, continuing. Um, so I think the, the, the big news from the last year was all the work uh, done on the counted by attribute, um, which is how we were, we're tagging flexible arrays. So you, if uh, the flexible array has no implicit size associated with it, but usually within the structure where you're ending with a flexible array, you're going to be tracking the size of it somewhere in that struct. So the counted by attribute associates these together. Um, and then we need to actually take that feature and use it in the kernel. So uh, we were now, like when I counted it last week, we were at something like 391 instances of this being annotated everywhere. Um, and many more people are starting to add this. Uh, and I think it's, I think hopefully this will, this has become the default for when you're using a flexible array, you need to annotate how, what determines its size. Um, another bit of parity that was sort of a, a bit of a footnote last year, but I think is going to make things a lot easier is the C spec disallowed sort of accidentally uh, flexible arrays in unions. Uh, but the, the existing extensions to the language for zero sized arrays allowed it. So you could have this construct. If you say, oh, I have a character array, it's zero sized. And the extensions were like, cool, cool, we'll treat that as a flexible array. And also it's legal in, an, in a union. But if you're taking a code base and modernizing it to use flexible arrays and you remove that zero there, suddenly you can't compile it anymore because all the compilers agreed that, oh, well, that's a true flexible array. You can't actually have that in union, even though everything works about it. Um, so allowing this as part of the extensions um, is now supported in both GCC and Clang, and that will uh, simplify <coughs> some really horrible hacks uh, that we have done in the kernel to work around this uh, that was literally using duplicate bugs in GCC and Clang to bypass the syntax checker. Um, and it would result in completely functional code that did the right thing, but it was literally trying to work around the syntax checker. So now we don't have to work around the syntax checker. Um, uh, so this slide, uh, before Monday, um, I was going to put all sorts of things into this bottom corner where we've been dealing with getting the stack canary for stack protector defined on a per thread basis. So it wouldn't be you know, the same for all uh, processes uh, in, in the kernel. For uh, like for RISC V and PowerPC under Clang, hadn't implemented this yet. Um, and it had been like four years with no progress. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I think I accidentally nerd sniped Keith into fixing these. Uh, so uh, now these are both in progress and my goal is I don't have to show this slide again. It's a show the same slide for four years. <laughs> um, so there's no new progress on forward edge CFI here. On in, like this slide is nearly identical to last year. Like there's CPU hardware support, all that's finished, has been finished for some time. Um, there's sort of a small GCC bug with BTI stuff that is of uncertain uh, uh, urgency. And then um, the, the software side of this, the software defined forward edge uh, CFI, uh, we still don't have any forward motion on this on GCC. So I'm still hoping that someone who's familiar with the backends can follow this implementation, which is very well defined for how to protect indirect functions. Yeah, I. You want to talk? Yeah. Actually, in this year's culture. Ah, yes, last, last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last weekend. Yeah, I bring this up in the culture, and after the, uh, my talk, 
some risk five guy reached okay. to me and uh, they might they are considering to do the safe eye stuff in risk five backend but their um, hardware scheme might also involve some uh, software fine grain that they need to hash the type ID okay. yeah so we I have uh, some discussing with with them and uh, May, maybe the middle end part, because the, the software KCFI need both middle end, the, the compiler middle end and the back end implementation. Mm -hmm. So the middle end part may be similar mm -hmm. as uh, RISC-V, okay. uh, but their impl implementation will also cover both mm -hmm. C and C++. Mm -hmm. So the C++ part have some mangling yeah, because the mangolin standard is different on different uh, C++ standard. So mm -hmm. there's some inconsistency with them, but there are also some common part with them. Right. Yeah, so they might uh, look at the old <coughs> patch sent by Dan Lee mm -hmm. uh, last year to study a little bit. So okay. I try, try to, yeah, continue discussing with them, yeah, on this part. Great, mm. okay. Yeah, it sounds like there's some common pieces that I feel like if we get that done, then doing the like the f really nitty gritty back end pieces will hopefully be a little bit faster. So yeah, this, this one I'm, I've been anxiously waiting for uh, for a little while. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that somebody will, yes. I was wondering if anybody was using this one. Has anybody looked at using the ARM32 uh, PAC PTI extensions for this stuff in the kernel? Yes. <laughs> um, I've I've talked about it from time to time, but my my priority has mainly been on having this work on real computers across all <laughs> architectures. <laughs> so, um, like, I'm interested in the hardware support for anything we can do in that, in that as a general idea, but I do want to have software based. KCFI still. Oh, uh, you want to actually not use the hardware or not have to use the hardware? I don't want to have to use the hardware. Okay. Um, being able to use PAC for signing those would be nice. It requires a, a non-trivial amount of infrastructure in the kernel uh, to do that, though, because we need signing we need signing tools. We need there's Could we at least use the BTI piece from ARM32? Which I mean, PAC BTI is kind of the same extension in ARM32. Could right. we at least use the ARM32 BTI stuff for the? I don't know. We'd, okay. We'd have to look at it, but I'm, I'm also not prioritizing ARM32. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, but it would, it would be interesting, like, uh, write a proof of concept. You already wrote a bunch of code for this, <laughs> this slide, so we can do some more. Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, but I, I, it would be nice to have the to use sign pointers for these things generally. Um, this is, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, Apple has done this for their kernel. Um, they have some experience with it, but uh, I haven't spent any time recently looking at it. Uh, let's see. Um, backward edge. There's really no new progress here. Um, the hardware support is the hardware support. Um, it exists. Uh, getting getting x86 hardware backed shadow call stack into the like into the the kernel for itself, not for user space, looks possibly undoable given all of the workarounds for branch target stuff. I don't know. Peter might know more than me about about what it would take to do the CET shadow call stuff. For Fred, okay, yes, different things. So that'll happen eventually. Um, in the meantime, it would be nice if ah, there's a there's a talk at the microconference on Friday on Fred. Um, okay, sorry, yes. I'm told that you need to speak louder. Louder. The microphone to get, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. I will shout. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, so one thing that we don't have any implementation for is effectively doing 
backward edge CFI with a hash similar to how we do KCFI forward. Um, and there's, no one's really implemented that for uh, GCC and Clang at all, but um, again, no new progress on this slide. I've said this before, but it would be, be nice to have because we don't have a viable uh, backwards edge CFI uh, software version for x86. It used, there used to be something like this uh, in, in Clang, but it got ripped out because it was both slow and non-deterministic which is not a great uh, state to be in. Um, let's see, so uh, let's see, work needed. So one of the areas counted by was for flexible arrays, but we also have this state where we'd like to apply it to pointers, generally. Um, so the, the um, types of arrays, we, we've had fixed size arrays, that's easy, we're done. We know how big they were. Dynamically sized things, uh, VLAs, which are on stack arrays of a dynamic size, we've banned in the kernel completely, so that's non-issue. And we've got our flexible arrays, now we can track with counted by, we don't have anything for pointers. Um, and so uh, the next steps for counted by are to be added um, to pointers, uh, and GCC and Clang are starting on this. Um, and this is sort of related to dash F bound safety, which I'll talk about later on. Um, Let's see, did you want to talk about this part for counted by for general pointers in GCC, or shall I? Do you want to do it? Okay. Yeah. So for the next step, yeah, for, for the counted by extension, we try to extend the counted by attribute to general pointer. Uh, so right now, for there are two basic two cases. The uh, pointer one one is a pointer used in a, a structure. Another one is a pointer used as a parameter. But it, when the pointer used as a parameter, actually in GCC we already have a attribute that's called the access attribute. So it's carry the same information which reference and uh, reference the, 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 the array and uh, which, uh, which parameter reference the array and which parameter is the size of that reference. So I think that's uh, equally the same as uh, counted by. So we are not uh, focus on this case. For GCC, we only focus on the first case, uh, the pointer inside the structure. And uh, I already discussed with uh, GCC uh, Global Reviewer on this, uh, this extension, and uh, they agreed on it. So our next step will try to uh, finish this one. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, you can. Um, I just a note that at Cauldron, they did note that the access attribute is not a thing where you, a, a, a thing for uh, currently used to generate warnings that this is not true. It's a promise to the optimizer that this is true. So we may want we may actually need another uh, another attribute or something simply so that you can use it for warnings without promising that it's true to the optimizer because you probably don't want to do both at once. You mean what? Well, access is currently a promise to the optimizer that this is that, that this is be, is being used to count that. Uh, and you mean not the access a thing used, attribute? Yeah, uh. it's it's not being used to generate warnings. It's being used to promise that they, that we we know this is true and you can optimize based on it. And that's not quite the same. Thing. Same as a counting about. Uh, no, <laughs> it's sort of the um, inverse. Yeah, right now the access attribute actually it's uh, implemented in the middle end. So mm -hmm. I think you are right. It's an optimization hint. So yeah, I think that's a good point. I well, might yeah consider yeah. a little bit to see whether there's any difference, whether we need to re-implement it or yeah, or give the consistent uh, name. Yeah, but yeah, thank you, thank you for your suggestion. Yeah. So is, is the next How is that function parameter stuff different than the C99 static sizing stuff available for parameters? For, for what? 
Well, for parameters, you can say, you can, you can pass in a, a pointer parameter and you actually declare it as an array and then you say static and then an expression which computes the size of it based on the other parameters. Yeah, I think that... How is that different? How is the access different than that? Because uh, that already provides warnings. Access provides a warning? No, the static stuff provides warnings in GCC. Oh, I'm, I'm not familiar with that. That, that was in C99. Yeah. I remember some example there that can be used, yep. but yeah. So I'm not sure how many users use it. And I've uh, seen the C spec for a bunch of the libc functions, and so function declarations in the in in the C C standard APIs can you, uh, often use those. Yeah, I think this access attribute might be added before that. Yeah. One well, one thing to uh, it only works for array. Um, Array inputs, not pointer inputs, and they're subtly That's different. You mean the access, right? No, no, the, the, no. The, 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 the syntax, the syntax for describing the size of an array in C99 is only for array parameters, not for pointer parameters, uh -huh. and they're not entirely the same. Oh, okay. So that's answer your question. Yes. Okay, okay. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. This oh, is I, yeah, I can yeah. this. Um, so uh, just to note that the C99, um, st the C99 static sizing stuff is actually de described in the same section of the standard that defines VLAs, and it's weirdly considered to be a sort of VLA, although it has no implications for stack allocation. So it's possible it's been accidentally banned in the kernel already, and it might need to be unbanned. It's local variables that are, via that are VLAs that are bad, not the ones that are function parameters with sizing. Right. Yeah. Um, let's see. So. Uh, as well, while working through annotations and other things, including you know performing allocation on structs that end with flexible arrays that have been annotated with counted by, uh, we found uh, a situation in the kernel where we I, I don't like having redundant information or manually repeated information. It leads to problems. Um, so I've wanted to adjust the kernel's allocator to be able to set the counter variable in the structure without knowing what the counter variable is. Um, because we know we have the array, because that's needed for performing the size calculation uh, on, you know, to figure out how many bytes we're going to need to allocate. Um, so I'd asked for an, an yet another extension uh, for counted by, which is uh, a lot of discussion happened around this, and we're sort of resolved to um, returning a pointer to the counter elements within the struct based on a pointer to the array that is being counted. And that way, with the allocator, we can say, ah, we figured out how many bytes, we've assigned this thing, and now we are going to set our counter variable, and now we're done. We've fully declared this object. It has its size set. Everything is finished. And with this in place, um, we sort of automatically can start annotating counted by without also having to go and check all of the allocation sites to make sure the counter has been set before we're accessing the array. Um, and that's been a cause, of, like a source of pain for our annotations, is we have to make sure that every place that that structure gets allocated, that the counter is set ahead of accessing the array contents. Um, so this would bring this up to the allocator uh, with, with a way that we don't have, that we can use it for all structures that have flexible arrays, and when a structure has counted by added to it, it magically gets the size added as well. Uh, so that's, that's the goal with this. Um, and both GCC and Clang working on this. Um, do you want to talk about this slide? Is it added? What? Okay. Did you do you want to talk about the void null and okay, you know, yeah. everything else? I guess. Yeah, I think the major thing during in GCC's implementation, we have a discussion on the return type, return type of this uh, built in, uh, especially when the non pointer, because when there's no attribute associated with the uh, array, uh, we will return a non pointer. But why? What kind of uh, type of the non pointer? Yeah, after discussing, we decide to report, return a void non-pointer. 
In the beginning, our implementation tried to re return a size t long pointer to work around some problem, but we finally decided to return void. That's for to ease the uh, use of this uh, built-in. Because in the static uh, type, uh, C is a static type uh, language, so uh, we cannot overloading his uh, its its type. So we need to use the generic. We need the generic uh, keyword to decide whether the return type is depend on the return type. We can assign it, assign a pointer or not assign a pointer. So that's for the, this purpose. Yeah, I, I don't know whether I have a, maybe I don't have that example. The, the generic? No I think, generic. I think, I think we skipped yeah, that. Yeah, we skipped that one. Impossible to read. Yeah, so I think the ma major, thing, major thing is the, the, the written type. Yeah, so that's it. Okay, mm. thank you. Um, uh, oh, there it goes. Yeah, so, um, so some of this slide is actually a lie. It doesn't look like this is really the downline. Because what happens is if this is a macro um, and uh, the count pointer that's defined there, um, that becomes a, a void star. And so the next line, which says, if void star, then dereference your void and set it to count. And the syntax checker goes, no. <laughs> You can't do that. It's void um, and is not removed with dead code elimination or anything. So you actually have to add a little bit more trickery here, which we've done and it, it works. Um, it's just this is a bit of a lie um, based on the return types. You eliminate the conditional trait. What was that? Um, They're replacing it batteries. It yeah, it eliminates conditional um, and it, 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 it actually makes, it generates better generates better code, um, it's just a little ugly to read. <laughs> it's like, what is this generic doing? Um, uh, let's see. Oh, this, yeah, this is your slide about where to find the, yeah. where to find the work and the versions, um, and that's sort of, it's under review currently. Um, so I could talk a little bit about, um, th there's a larger proposal from, uh, from Apple. Uh, it's, it's written up on Clang's uh, RFCs about sort of generalized bound safety. Um, they talked to us about this after, after we talked about the need for a counted by like whenever ago uh, when we were talking in this forum um, and said, oh, we actually have a counted by. We have... Uh, we have sized by, which is strictly a byte size, not a element count size. We have things for marking terminators for arrays for strings like ended by null or ended by something else, um, as well as bidirectional, bidirectional indexable pointers. Like they they've have a huge number of things around covering all aspects of sort of gaps in C's bound safety, um, and I I expect that we will slowly want to adopt as many of these as we can uh, put it put into the kernel and and sort of progress through the discussion of how to implement each of these things since it has every single one of these has I, i'm sure is going to have as much discussion as just basic counted by had um so uh, that that's an rfc to read it's 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 pretty interesting because it does cover a lot of stuff um i have been focused mostly on lowest hanging fruit and that's why we went after flexible arrays and they were trying to just say, here's all of the stuff, we're gonna do it all at once. Uh, which is fine, but kind of hard to do in the kernel. Um, so there's other aspects of uh, sort of related to bounds checking that are, that are being worked on. Um, Clang still has a problem with nested structures and figuring out their size correctly. This is just a, it's just a bug, it needs to be fixed. Um, this is already fixed in GCC. Um, uh, uh, Clang doesn't have uh, value range tracking at compile time, so it's not doesn't have this array bounds issue because it just can't analyze it. Um, but we have some places where we uh, the kernel sort of unintentionally constructs code that the compiler sees as obviously incorrect, 
Um, but when you get warnings about it, it's not really clear what's going on. So um, there's some uh, work on clarifying dash W array bounds, which we have been trying to turn on in the kernel for a couple of years. Um, I can let you talk about it. <laughs> Up and down. Up and down. Yeah, so this, this is supposed to be an a important, important bug that filed by kernel against GCC, so which one uh, inhibits GCC from turning on the uh, W are rebound by default. So actually, this is a very simple example. In the beginning, it's, um, it's complaining about this is a f false positive by GCC. So yeah, because from user's point of view, it's really the, the warning message is very confusing. You can see yeah, the line 13, line 13 have a warning. Line 13 here has a warning and the, sorry, and the warning about the index is about the area bounds, and uh, which is uh, defined at nine, line nine, yeah. So where this warning come from, whether it's a false positive or not, yeah, so from user's point of view, the first intention, yeah, it's a impression is a false positive. But yeah, after study and a lot of discussing, we finally um, agreed this is really is not a false positive. It's a real uh, user error. So, but, but it's catched by compile. It's introduced by the compiler optimization combined with the GCC's uh, value range propagation analysis. So I'll dis yeah this explain a little bit in the next slides on why this has happened. So, thank you. Oh, I didn't have that slide, sorry. <laughs> I didn't. Talk about the warning. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that's, yeah, I, that's, that's a detail, so I didn't add that slide on, that's on my cauldron slides, yeah. Sorry about that. So that's after a lot of discussing, we agreed this is a real, uh, this is a real user error, but the compiler has problem with without I issue more information, more details to explain to user what happened, why why this this is error come from. So in GCC, we're trying to uh, improve the GCC's diagnostic to add a new new option. Yeah, the name is still not decided yet. Yeah, the name is <laughs> <laughs> the name is still not decided yet. But we are trying to because in GCC there are quite some places uh, due to the compiler optimization <coughs> duplication. Then the GCC is able to report uh, error. Some some of the error is real error. Some of it is false positive. But user is confusing with the uh, error because they don't know where the error come from. Uh, so it's a general improvement in GCC. We try to improve and to add this kind of option and report more information to user uh, to, to tell them when, yeah, there's a, yeah this is a initial implementa implementation I added into GCC. And this is the out outcome with this new functionality. So with this new functionality, GCC will be able to record uh, the, the, the situation when the code is duplicated. And uh, then it uh, will, the, the code duplication recorded will be uh, queried when the GCC analyze, uh, analyze the code issue warning and use the to force a, a diagnostic pass and to then explain to the user uh, why this error happens. So I'm not sure whether this can, this is easier for the user to I understand think. why the error happens. It might be easier to flip back to the previous slide and, okay. the, and note that warn, the problem is that warn yeah, returns you can, and you people can see assume the it e doesn't. Event, event one is the line four. Line four is that uh, condition, condition executed. So we, we're back to the previous slide. So the line, uh, not line four, nine, actually it's a nine five, 
it's an index bigger than that index. If that condition evaluate as, as true, then the index will be larger than four. So the user, uh, the user only issue a warning, but still continue execution. So the next statement, register equal to var, so that's a reference to the uh, array. So that reference array, actually, the index of that array already bigger than four. So the, there's an out of bound array access uh, when the, the branch at line five is evaluated at four, uh, at two. So this is a real bug. This is a real user bug. Yeah. Okay. So I think I ended. Yeah. All right, cool. and, and from the perspective of the kernel person trying to find this bug, there's time travel occurring because the assignment happens after the warning, but so that's, that's sort of where the discussion went. Uh, let's see, I've got 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, this is also your slide, like here's where to find it. Um, oh good, 10 minutes. You wanna do this slide? <laughs> Hello? Yeah, I'm running on two cans of Pringles, <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so there's this question of, or I guess a problem of unexpected, uh, am I loud enough? Yeah. Arithmetic wraparound or overflow, this semantic argument debate that's been going on. Um, and what are, what are our strategies? How can we resolve this or mitigate this in the kernel? Because ultimately, if we could turn on the overflow sanitizers, then we're increasing protection. If you go on the list of CVEs and you can filter by r overflow or wraparound issues, you're going to get a lot of hits. So if we can reduce the total number of bugs in the kernel that lead to exploits, this would be beneficial for hardening efforts. Um, so it's interesting because the signed integer overflow sanitizer actually doesn't work in the kernel, or at least didn't until very recently. Uh, we use dash f no strict overflow, which defines all uh, overflow as two's complement wraparound. So there is no undefined behavior, so the sanitizer doesn't need to do anything, and it stepped out of the way. Um, that is still the case for GCC. So if you turn on signed integer overflow on GCC 14, you turn on dash F wrap V, you'll get no instrumentation except for on division checks, which uh, wrap V doesn't have any say in. Uh, in Clang 19, we just landed, um, we just changed the behavior of the signed integer overflow sanitizer to now work with dash F wrap V, which is implied by dash F no strict overflow. That's a bug. Um, so yes, yeah, so there's a semantic argument between undefined and maybe unexpected. So the behavior is no longer undefined when you use the flags just mentioned. So maybe the sanitizer, you could argue, the sanitizer shouldn't do anything, but it now does. So yes, it's a bug, but it's an intentional one, I suppose, uh, towards the effort of reducing unexpected arithmetic wraparound, which is just as impactful. Um, Another thing is the kernel has some what I'll call overflow dependent code patterns. So there is code in the kernel that is either checking for overflow. If you think of the pattern, if A plus B less than A, you're doing this intentional overflow check in source and you intend to handle it in some special way. The sanitizer will instrument that and give you a splat when it's not really wanted. So we have these idiom exclusions that are landed in Kling 19. Um, it includes the unsigned constants as well, negated unsigned constants. That negative one UL will always overflow every time. That's the only control path. It will always overflow, which means you'll always get a sanitizer splat, which means turning on the sanitizers is a futile effort because you'll get millions of splats on stuff like that. So, um, these idiom exclusions, or in Clang, they're called pattern, ignored patterns, uh, will tell the sanitizer to step out of the way for very specific code idioms. Those are the three currently supported. It supports variations of A plus B, all the logical equivalents it will support. Um, another thing, because this discussion was brought up on an RFC case sent, another thing is uh, maybe we'll get better signal to noise by limiting the types that we are instrumenting. So maybe integer is a very noisy type. Um, we would get too many splats to reasonably deal with. 
and the signal to noise would be quite bad because a lot of them would be false positives. Um, if we can limit it to maybe only size T, so if we can tell the sanitizer only instrument size T or, yes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> not touch anything else. Uh, yes. So you mean like a in-source annotation or attributes for types or arithmetic expressions? Like const, like volatile. Yes, I agree with you. A CV qualifier, except CV is a wee bit. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. And that PR is outstanding. And the direction is moving away from that. Uh, Maybe Case can talk on why the direction is moving away. But I, the first, I don't want pattern exclusions, really. I want something called a wraps attribute, which you apply to types or to expressions, and you say, hey, this thing wraps around. And yeah, it's be because Case has been proposing shite. It's absolute atrocious crap. Yes. Um, oh, well. <laughs> and I don't want that. Gary's clearly talking to me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know. Peter, you and I have a fundamental differ differing opinion on how we get mitigation coverage. Um, I want to be safe by default. Um, that means we have to mark the unexpected things. Uh, sorry, we have to mark the expected uh, places where we're wrapping so that all the rest will get caught. Um, you don't agree with that. That's, I understand, and that's why we've worked with trying to get what you want on this, and one of those was opting in. Uh, so right. opting in with size T is one of the cleanest paths we've got to Well, if you make a CV this. qualifier or, or whatever you want to call it, then you can redefine or type that size T as using that. We tried yep. that. Yep. It didn't. Why not? Someone's on the exact opposite side of the fence as you, so then... Yeah. We, we sort of have to work with what we can get from compiler folks and from the rest of the kernel. But, but that type def of size T can be in the kernel. Right, but what we're doing instead, which gets us the same result, is we can apply this, the instrumentation only to size t. So where we just define that it is a non-wrapping type is just not necessarily with a type def, but we can change how that type is handled by the uh, by the sanitizer. It's so from a language sanitizers. point of view, I dislike magic like this because now you make size t magic and that magic is not available to anything else. Whereas if you would have done the qualifier, mm -hmm. this magic would be a language feature and could be applied to other cases. We could certainly try it again, but I'd like to prove it out. Like we don't have a, it's really hard to make forward progress on this um, without having something that we know actually works and can be uh, mm, okay. ex expanded. Yeah, if I could add to that. Yeah. The wraps attribute, or the equivalent of what you're talking about, is not mutually exclusive from this type filtering. And also, this type filtering is not hard-coded in Kling itself. This is something that we will have in kbuild that says ignore size, or sorry, only instrument size T, for example. So it will be magic because you won't see it in source, but it will exist in your tree. You will be able to find it. It's not hard-coded. Um, and both features can exist. And the first thing we tried was the wraps attributes. And then we, yeah, reasons. So now this is where we're at. Uh, um, towards the goal of turning on the sanitizers. Because turning them on right now is not possible with instrumenting all types and all patterns. It's not possible. That's going to be a mess. Yeah, so and this last bullet point uh, maybe addresses your point. We want annotations in the kernel. In source is better than out of source. If it says this wraps, I, I see that as a better developer experience. Uh, yeah. Five minutes? We've got five more, five more yeah. OK. Um, I think that's the last slide, though. So um, here was us. Any other <laughs> thoughts, discussion, comments? Yeah. Um, a question about null pointers. Is it possible to disallow them for, let's say, whole drivers or subsystems, and then only annotate the cases where null pointers to functions are allowed? Uh, yes, I think that's, that's an existing. A, that, that exists. Yeah, that's okay. an existing. That answer. is not being used right not now. Used all, no. You have plans to enable that? I think it'd be great. I, like, if we don't already have that as a recognized. Um, uh, uh, I mean, it's a crazy amount of work, of course, but to, to go through and mark them. Yeah. Eh. Yeah, but 
<laughs> this is what we do. <laughs> we do crazy levels of annotation. Yeah, about that. So that is an attribute, and one of the problems with putting it in the kernel is it will get lost very easily. Mm -hmm. Attributes tend to be pretty ephemeral in C. They come and go depending on situations. So that was one of the problems we had with the wraps attribute, and the compiler folks were telling us you can't really do this uh, as easily as we tried to do it. So maybe the null pointer thing is not so simple. It might take some, some work on both sides. It seems to me it should work as long as the prototype's in scope. Uh, if you've got multiple prototypes to the same function, I said I, I describe, you know, well, at most two, one in the file defining it and one in the header, I'd say you've probably got a bug that right there that should be fixed. Yeah, I, I, think, it's, I think it's doable. I think there would be, um, it would stop us more quickly because we could actually ver ver verify those things at build time. And um, yeah, please send patches. <laughs> Oh, I have a, a little question. Okay. Is everything that is requiring GCC at this point in Baxilla? Um, everything from your list? The, oh. Could you? Yeah. And you're talking about this list? This in, in general, I mean. Um, this list isn't because of some uh, existing fundamental disagreements about the word undefined, mm -hmm. because undefined has a very well-defined meaning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and this going back and forth about so that. Yeah, we need to resolve that, and, yeah. and I want to be able to even prove it out at all as a yeah, thing. And, uh, and then I think everything else, there's Well, and GCC for. needs the unsigned sanitizer to begin with. Uh, yeah, uh, like yeah, actually, all it's this... It's never undefined. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All the items I already bring up in the GCC community, yeah, the yeah. last, oh. still the last one. The integer overflow. Yeah, I think uh, we have a big problem in the integer overflow uh -huh. area. This one. Yeah, 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 so I think the first item, the uh, we need the unsigned integer overflow sanitizer, right? So that one, I think, it sh I, I bring it out and someone don't agree it is still because the undefined behavior or sanitizer, yeah. yeah. But I think that part, I, I, I have little confidence to convince them. The major issue, I think, is uh, EDM exclusion. Yeah, that part I bring out during this call round, and also I discuss with the uh, uh, main reviewer, main <laughs> reviewer, uh, Richard Bernie, mm -hmm. on this <laughs> EDM exclusion. And uh, I don't think it's a, yeah, from my personal opinion, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a hack, yeah. So the, the GCC community, I don't, don't know, yeah, from my understanding, it's very hard to accept uh, this kind of hack into the GCC. So we are trying to find some more general way mm -hmm. to, to do the same thing, but with some other approach right now. So yeah. I have some idea, but I still need to study a little bit, yeah. 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 Uh, and, and yeah, so so I think the yeah, I think the last one, yeah. Well that's a big big problem in GCC. And right now I think I will try to study that approach I discussed with you yeah. and to see whether it's yeah, whether it's work or not. Yeah, yeah. like my goal showing up every year to talk about all these things is really just to get that discussion. I, I, I don't claim that this is how it should work. Um, and and, and uh, I think Peter definitely agrees it's not how this should work. Um, and, and so like the idea is to try to get somewhere where we can actually make progress on it. Um, so that's it. I think I'm out of time. Out of time? Yes. Okay, Thank cool. You. Thanks so much.